Ah, so today I want to begrudgingly share something because I don't really like doing this. I think it is sort of cheap and lazy. However, I will make the exception for one gentleman, and that gentleman is Victor Davis Hanson. Now, I have asked several people in my entourage, so to speak, about him, and no one knows who he is, which is very disappointing to me. So Mr. Hansen is an author, columnist, classics professor, military historian, and also a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution. So his credibility, as far as I'm concerned, is ironclad. And of all the people I follow in research for the bits that I do news on for you guys, he is the guy's writing I always read, and there is no rival in sight. I do see him write a lot on AM Greatness, which I will link in the description. So with that in mind, I would like to read a piece he did recently, which I hope will suffice for an explanation as to why I regard him so highly. So without further ado, let's see what Mr. Hansen has to say. The left got what it wanted. So now what? There is no schadenfreude in seeing the left destroy everything it touches, because its claws tear all of us as well. What was the purpose for the insane opposition of the left between 2017 and 2021? To usher in a planned nihilism, an incompetent chaos, a honed anarchy to wreck the country in less than a year. Then, no sooner had Donald Trump entered the office than scores of House Democrats filed motions for impeachment, apparently for thought crimes he might someday, in theory, could possibly commit. Foreign Policy published an article by a liberal Obama administration lawyer, outing all the ways to remove an elected president as soon as possible, including consideration of a military coup. The FBI and the entrenched bureaucrats of the Justice Department continued their prior failed efforts during the campaign to see the lies of the fabricated steel dossier and fusion GPS. A 22-month-long and $40 million hoax ended with the special counsel himself, a doddering Robert Mueller, swearing under oath that he essentially knew nothing about the dossier or fusion GPS, the twin catalyst that had prompted his very own investigation. Fired FBI Director James Comey, a lion on Twitter and a lamb when under oath, on over 240 occasions testified to the Congress that either he did not know or could not remember when asked details about the collusion fraud that the philosopher G-Man had helped perpetuate. No one worries about the weaponization of government, so we went right from the nefarious legacy of John Brennan, who lied under oath to Congress twice, James Clapper, who lied under oath to Congress once, James Comey, who leaked confidential presidential memos, Andrew McCabe, who gave false testimony to federal investigators, Lisa Page, who was fired from the special counsel's legal team for various unprofessional conduct, Peter Stroke, about whom there is not enough space to detail his transgression, and the now convicted felon Kevin Kleinsmith onto the next round of impeachments. Two of them followed. Neither was conducted by a special counsel. There was no array of witnesses, no prosecutorial report, much less were there formal charges of a specific high crime or misdemeanor, or bribery or treason, as specified by the Constitution. In the end, both farces ended in trials, but not before the left had established lots of baleful precedents. Impeachment is now simply a tool to embarrass a president in his first term when he has lost the House. A Senate trial could hound an innocent president, even as a private citizen out of office. And a chief justice need not preside over the Senate trial. If and when Joe Biden loses the House, the left should applaud any attempt to impeach him, given it established the new model of opposition. Of the January 6th debacle, we were not told that it was a riot involving lawbreakers who would be punished. Instead, we were lied to that it was an armed insurrection, a coup, a rebellion of massive proportions. Our esteemed retired military and civil libertarians who had damned the mere thought of using federal troops to quell the prior four summer months of continuous rioting was suddenly happy to see 25,000 federal troops patrol Washington to hound out fantasy second-wave insurrectionists. In Animal Farm fashion, there were now to be good federal troops deterring mythical violent domestic extremists, but bad federal troops who should never stop real ongoing mayhem in the street. It mattered nothing that armed in the case of January 6 meant that no firearms were used or even found among the protesters. No one was charged with conspiracy, insurrection, or racketeering, but many were placed in solitary confinement without specific charges being filed, to the utter delight of liberal groups like the ACLU and human rights organizations. The FBI, recently known mostly for spreading Hillary Clinton's campaign collusion hoax, found no premeditated grand plot. The remaining media narratives were also untrue. Capitol Police officer Brian Sicknick was not murdered, but died tragically of a stroke the next day. Five persons were not killed. Four who died were Trump supporters. Only one of the five deaths occurred at the hand of a known other, 
a 14-year military veteran, unarmed, 110-pound female Ashley Barbett. She was fatally shot while attempting to enter through a window of the Capitol by a law enforcement officer, to the frequent approbation of the left-wing commentariat. The officer's name was hidden for months from the public, something conspicuously uncharacteristic in other cases where law enforcement officers are involved in shooting unarmed suspects. Videos surrounding the entire melee still have been repressed. They likely will never be released. That infamous day remains in dire contrast to the prior 120 days of continuous rioting, looting, and arson. In the election year, summer 2020, federal courthouses and iconic buildings were torched. Nearly two billion worth of property was destroyed, and 28 were killed. Yet current Vice President Kamala Harris rallied the public to help bail out the arrested, and the architect of the 1619 Project reassured Americans that crimes against property like arson and looting were not really violence per se. The weeks of spontaneous mayhem magically vanished after November 3, 2020. Note that esteemed medical professionals argued that BLM protesters who flooded the streets were exempt from quarantine, social distancing, and mask requirements given their higher morality. There is now good riots and bad ones. The noble sustained silence about a noble officer who lethally shoots an unarmed suspect and noble immediate outing of an ignoble officer who lethally shoots an unarmed suspect. These were merely the main media distortions and fixations over the last four years. We forget the daily craziness such as a president's calls to foreign heads of state routinely leaked or the FBI director passing on confidential memos of private presidential conversations to the liberal press, or the whistleblower who was not a whistleblower as much as a democratic operative. The media in idea came when the press bellowed that Trump had overfed a fish. An array of retired four stars damned their president as Hitlerian, Mussolini-like, and deserving an early exit from office. Their superior morality naturally excused them from abiding by the uniform code of military justice. The New York Times falsely identified a minor Trump administration bureaucrat, anonymous, as a major conservative truth-teller, once he thrilled the media by lying that a large, morally superior inside cabal was devoted to obstructing the implementation of a president's orders. Everyone from Hillary Clinton to an active FBI lawyer bragged of joining the resistance, with plenty of conspiratorial retroaccusations that the 2016 election was rigged. That was all a warm-up for the plague year in which Donald Trump was blamed for every COVID death. His medical advisor, Dr. Anthony Fauci, was deified due to his largely coy opposition to the president he was supposed to serve. Both the current president and vice president had less than a year ago urged Americans not to be vaccinated, given their own reluctance to take a Trump vaccine. At least the anti-vaxxers had consistent opposition to the experimental inoculation. In contrast, the anti-Trumpers anti-vaxxers merely saw sabotaging the 2020 vaccination program as necessary to be in a position to claim it as their own in 2021. Now, what did all that madness achieve? Mostly, the first election in U.S. history in which over 100 million ballots were not cast on Election Day. Strangely, with such an avalanche of ballots, the usual error rate of absentee ballots died from 2 to 4 percent to 0.2 to 0.4 percent. You see, when we suddenly must count tens of millions more paper ballots, then it becomes easier, not harder, to spot errors. So the left won its Pyrrhic victory. The nation was done with the demonized Trump and now the left controlled the presidency and both houses of Congress. Somnolent old Joe from Scranton pledged to heal the nation as he overturned his predecessor's supposedly dangerous policies and went on a rampage of slandering his opponents. If Donald Trump was once damned as a non compass mentis, the same media and academic accusers kept mum as Biden shuffled, fell, went mute, slurred words and went off on angry, disjointed and incoherent riffs. What followed was a concerted effort to destroy the Trump record, the greatest level of combined annual natural gas and oil production in any nation's history, record low minority unemployment and near record peacetime, general unemployment, a border secure and illegal immigration finally under control, and a new Middle East in which Israel and its Arab enemies concluded neutral pacts. China was put on notice for its past mockery of global norms. Inflation was low, growth was good. Stagflation was still a rarely remembered word from the past. And again, what was all that Pavlovian nihilism to achieve? Within eight months, the following was finalized. Joe Biden utterly destroyed the idea of a border. Some two million were scheduled to cross illegally in the current fiscal year. The sheer inhumanity of deplorable conditions at the border surpassed any notion of the cages Donald Trump, in fact, had inherited from the humanitarian Barack Obama. A war almost immediately broke out in the Middle East once Biden distanced the United States from Israel and rebooted the radical Palestinian cause. 
The Taliban defeated the 20-year effort of the United States in Afghanistan in the most humiliating withdrawal of the American military in over 45 years. Tens of billions of dollars of abandoned military equipment now arm the Taliban and have turned Afghanistan into a world arms mart for terrorists. Iran is emboldened and speeds up its nuclear proliferation efforts. China bragged that the United States has been Afghanistan and will not defend its allies, Taiwan in particular. At home, gas prices have soared. Prior trillion dollar deficits now seem financially prudent in comparison to multi trillion dollar red ink. The nation is more racially polarized than at any time in the last half century. A bleak and venomous woke creed has outdone the hate and fear of the McCarthyism of the 1950s, as it wages war on half the nation for various thought crimes and the incorrect idea that the United States was, is, and always will be a kind and humane place. More will likely have died each day from COVID by year's end during Biden's first 12 months than during Trump's last 12 months. That statistic perhaps might have been meaningless had Biden himself not demagogued the idea that a president is strangely responsible for all pandemic deaths on his watch. But then again, Biden had warped the pandemic narrative only after he had inherited the Trump vaccination program, 17 million vaccinated by Inauguration Day. Biden was wrongly and prematurely convinced that vaxxers were a permanent prophylaxis to any sort of COVID variant that would simply disappear once he took office. Depending on the occasion, Biden claims none or just 4 million were vaxxed until he took office, as truth and fantasies waft through his cloudy cognition. With Biden came not just woke polarization, stagflation, a subsidized in new that erodes the work ethic, and selective non-enforcement of existing laws. Worse still, we got a bankrupt ideological defense of these insanities. Critical legal theory, critical race theory, and the new monetary theory were all dreamed up by parlor academics to justify the nihilism. Did America ever believe that the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff would trash his commander-in-chief as Hitlerin to journalist Hitman, or allegedly denounce news organizations as terrorists, or interrupt the chain of command on a prompt by the Speaker of the House, or warn the Chinese military that he believed there was enough instability in the White House to justify a promise to warn of any impending U.S. military action against Beijing deemed offensive? Was General Milley suffering from the very white rage he sought to ferret out? With Biden, China is now omnipresent in the halls of power. A task of our chief covert advisor, Anthony Fauci, seems to be to deny repeatedly that his stealthy funding of gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Virology Lab in China had anything to do with the likely accidental release of a likely human-engineered and energized coronavirus. Americans still cannot even imagine that their government might have helped subsidize the plague germ that has wrought such havoc upon them. Meanwhile, the president's son still owns a 10% cut in a communist Chinese government-affiliated financial venture, apparently due to his prior drug-addled record of financial mismanagement. The media still insists Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation, while his paint-by-numbers art is auctioned off to foreign lobbyists expecting a return to the old days when Hunter and Joe grandly arrived on Air Force Two to do their bidding. What did the left leave as the proper model for conservatives now to deal with Biden? Impeach him when he loses the House? Get a special counsel, lavish said counsel with $40 million, a dream team of right-wing lawyers, and 22 months to find real Chinese collusion. Start seeding a conservative version of Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and an anonymous whistleblower inside the Biden octopus. Get retired four-star generals on TV to swear Biden is a Chinese asset, or have them retweet the idea of sending Biden supporters to China, or swear that he is a fascist. Bring back Woodward and Bernstein to find out whether Biden Inc. ever paid out taxes on all their Chinese and Ukrainian cash. Call in the ubiquitous Dr. Brandy X. Lee from Yale to administer the Montreal Cognitive Assessment to prove that Biden can distinguish a camel from an elephant or a train from a bike or count backwards from five. Will the right prod General Mark Milley's replacement to collude with soon-to-be Speaker Kevin McCarthy and call the Russians to warn that Biden is demented, democracy is messy, Kamala Harris is crazy, and thus Moscow might need a warning from us about any Biden preemptive aggression. And what of the people who voted for this change and the media that empowered it? In the latest Quinnipiac poll, known for its liberal affinities, Biden now earns a 38% approval rating. We should add a few extra negative points given media bias. Do they suffer bias remorse or angst that they were lied to by the hard left that Joe Biden was cognizant and not a mere vessel for a two-year push for overt socialism? Meanwhile, the media is reduced to explaining why an undocumented activist has an understandable right to chase a liberal Democratic senator into a public restroom, hector her, and then video her as she enters a store to relieve herself, and then post the grotesqueness on the internet. 
a felony in the state of Arizona, though just part of the process for the President of the United States. We could call the above insanity nemesis for woke hubris, or maybe it's karma, payback's a bitch, or what goes around comes around. But there is no schadenfreude in seeing the left destroy everything it touches, because it's claws, they're all of us as well. Hope you all enjoyed all of that and found that informative. And that's all for today. Until next time.